was quite an average day. Uh, there was um, a slight breeze up in the morning, it was, uh, about nine or ten knots um, from the northeast or east northeast. So it was not comfortable, but um, there was a bit of swell around, a bit of chop, so not the best day to get out on the water. So after launching, um, I got out to the back set and I could see the water visibility was quite bad. The water was quite green. And this is what happens uh, when the northeasterly blows here in the Sunshine Coast. Um, so yeah, ideally we actually want more of the blue waters coming in. The blue water comes in from the easterly wind and uh, brings in all the game fish. Anyway, I decided to try my luck. So um, after launching, I just set up my rigs. Um, so that's uh, two rods. One is a trolling rod with dead bait and one is a rod, a spinning rod with another hard body lure. So uh, my dead bait that I was using this morning is a garfish um, with uh, my own rig that I make up for the garfish. And it just yeah, makes the, the garfish uh, swim quite nicely. So after paddling away from the launch spot, um, normally I don't deploy my, my rigs uh, straight from the launch spot because there are a lot of many pesky little sharks around. So I waited until I could get past um, the river mount and uh, yeah, it was about uh, eight, 900 meters away from the beach and I put out my garfish and my hot body. So I was paddling away for a short while and my line went off and uh, it's the classic small shark uh, bite and run on the on the rig you know it's initial bite and a little bit of a run and then it kind of just sits there and rests and uh, automatically knew uh, what was coming up so uh, anyway I reeled it in and as you can see here on the footage um, it's actually a little uh, reef tip shark small one so I just uh, unhooked him and um, set up the rig and uh, decided to keep my garfish and hard body lure out of the water until uh, I get closer to my destination, which was um, Falls Reef out of uh, Laguna Bay in Noosa. Yeah, the line went off and I was a little bit surprised. Picked up the line and uh, felt it. I could feel that there was a bit of weight behind it. Uh, so I thought, okay, maybe this is a bigger shark. But as you can see in the footage here, the, uh, <laughs> the pelagic that took my bait started tail walking. And I didn't know this at this point, because I, all I could feel, it was behind me, and the wind was blowing in uh, directly into my face from the front. So anything out the back, uh, you can't really um, hear. It's not that audible. So um, yeah, a little to my, uh, or at least um, not to my knowledge, there was um, a, a pelagic tail walking at the back without my knowledge and it felt like there was a couple of bumps on the line and I thought that it was a bigger shark and that the bigger shark was now deciding to make a little bit of a run for it. So um, anyway, I started reeling it in and what, what you normally try and do is bring the line in, or not in, but you try and bring the fish around or the kayak around to the point where um, the fish is in, directly in front of you so that if it's a big fish, like a big shark, you can fight the fish from uh, the front. And that, that helps because the rods parallel, parallel to the kayak straight out. And if there's any big pulls, uh, yeah, it can't pull you sideways and pull you overboard. So that's what I did. The fish came around and as the fish came around, this uh, fish, yeah, there was a couple of small runs and I thought, wow, that's interesting. And then, um, yeah, just in, in the distance ahead, as you can see on the footage, uh, <laughs> I saw this fish tail walking. Woo! My goodness, you can hear my surprise and excitement as um, it goes on here in the video. Oh, so um, after reviewing the, the video footage, I could see there were two tail walks uh, while I was um, while it was behind me, and I was trying to get get the fish around to the front. Um, and there's probably another four tail walks that I saw. There could have been more. So probably six, maybe more, uh, all up. And um, at that point, you get to the next stage of the fight, and that is the slog. First bits of all the excitement were with the fish tail walking and going nuts. And um, 
so yeah the next part now is uh, just sitting in and uh, holding on and uh, keeping the fish or really tiring the fish out and keeping the fish in front of you and this fish well now at this point I knew it was a sailfish I did get a little bit confused um, at, at a later point uh, I thought maybe with this with this pelagic being so aggressive like uh, jumping out the water that often it might be a marlin because you know it was a little bit hard to see as you can see in the video footage as well but uh, definitely was a sailfish Yeah, so the slug involved just um, reeling him in a little bit and now all sorts of thoughts were going through my mind. What the hell am I going to do with this fish? I always thought my first one, my first sailfish or marlin, I'll keep just for the sake of keeping it and frying it uh, to eat. But um, it's not that kosher to keep them and uh, yeah, it's preferable to let them go. Just um, more from a... A conscious uh, point of view as opposed to uh, killing it and eating it but uh, it's a beautiful animal anyway that's what I thought and then I thought well hang on this fish is uh, pretty lively and it might try and come out and stab me as I've seen on many YouTube videos you see guys with marlin and stuff on boats and these uh, marlin really at some point uh, go and you know try and attack them and jump in the boats um, you know, this is a bit of a dangerous thing sitting on a kayak with this swordfish carrying on like this. So anyway, I was um, reeling, it in, reeling it in, it was a slog, I was getting it in, getting it in, and I uh, managed to get it right up uh, next to me, on the side of me, yeah, as you can see, and I've uh, got a little bit of underwater video footage. And um, yeah, so at this point I was going, okay, he's calmed down a bit, but um, yeah, I'll get him up close, and I, after all the tail walking, and... If you see the video footage underwater here, and then I could see of the fish, it was some of the most beautiful colors I've ever seen on a fish. It was uh, iridescent blue stripes on it, and, and the sail was just lit up, and it was just unbelievable. And I just realized, like, at that point, I can't, I can't keep this fish. I've got to let it go. And I don't really want to leave a hook in the, the fish's mouth, because I had uh, two uh, trebles and a, a hook with, sink, with a sinker on it. So, you know, I didn't want to kind of leave all that in its mouth. So I thought, okay, I'll try and get it up and um, remove the, the hooks from its mouth. But I'd have to do this carefully with the fish being alive and the sword and all that. So you can see I'm a, bit, a little bit hesitant getting it up and trying to get hold of it. But I realized I can't tail grab the sailfish. The tail is too big. And um, you can see the tail splashing up at me here. And I'm going, wow, this, um, this is quite a big fish. What the hell am I going to do? And I uh, got it closer, like real close, and I could see quite a lot of blood coming out of its gills as it was swimming. And um, yeah, obviously this concerned me because I realized at this point the fish actually was busy giving up. It was, um, you know, giving up its energy and uh, obviously running out of blood. It was kind of, uh, yeah, just giving up the fight. Um, and I realized also at this point that I can't just let the fish go because yeah of course the sharks will just um, go and chomp it it's not gonna live yeah all in all I think um, the decision was made for me at that point so I really had no option so I kept the fish put it in the hatch
Yeah, he couldn't get out of this one, eh? Yeah, that's why he was bleeding from not any other girls. Yeah. Oh, he was blue in the water, eh? Jesus. It's unbelievable. Yeah, no, right in the gills, eh? Yeah, he was uh, bleeding out. <laughs> at this point, I uh, pulled the fish out of the hatch uh, just to get a good look at it because um, I, I wanted to get some photo opportunities. I didn't really have an opportunity out at sea because the fish was too big. And um, yeah, I pulled it out and it caused, it caused a bit of commotion on the beach because a lot of the beachgoers being mostly foreigners, well not so much foreigners, but out of state visitors new, from uh, New South Wales, Victoria and all over the place, um, they probably have never seen a sailfish in their life before and I, I bet none of them have ever seen a sailfish coming out of a hatch of a kayak. So I pulled this uh, fish out, gave it a bit of a display here and um, yeah, there was a bit of a crowd gathering All in all, this was uh, such an awesome experience. Um, definitely recommend it. I, I would really, if I was targeting marlin or sailfish, I would rig up with uh, a circle hook so that you can catch the fish up in, in the corner of the mouth as opposed to the treble looking up in the gills. I mean, it wasn't my intention. Yeah, I just want to thank you all for watching and uh, if you guys got any questions like rigs and baits and things like this, let me know. It was all a bit of a surprise to me this morning, uh, but yeah, a couple of things I've been using have been working quite well and I'm quite happy with that. So.